What's up, soldiers? Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Sunday afternoon vibes it up in the kitchen. After last year's sorrel glazed ham, your know, instant success, things started trending and all kind of thing. You knew I had to come hard this year. So in today's recipe, we're doing a jerk ham, but we're not just going to stop there. We're going to make a glaze with mango, with orange juice, with pineapple, brown sugar, and some dark rum. Yo, this is going to be one of the best ham recipes you're about to... <laughs> I'm real proud of this one. So vibes it out, man. Yeah, so here we have the ham. <laughs> yeah, we do need a ham for this ham recipe. One too many swigs of that monkey rum there, I guess. But uh, I'm in a good mood, man. Um, so what I went ahead and I did, I cut off the sort of skin and the fat, most of that fat from... <sighs> which, uh, you know, the whole circle of the ham here. And this is a fully cooked ham, uh, smoked. Just so we don't get that noise, I'm just gonna lift it up. It's about nine pounds, and beyond cutting off all that skin and, and most of that fat, because I, I wanted to get the whole meat exposed for the jerk marinade, I went ahead and I cut some lines. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but I only went down maybe about a millimeter or so with a, with a sharp knife, it just went this way and opposite because we want that marinade to penetrate in there and in making a marinade it's no different than what we've already done in the past i have here some golden brown sugar allspice cinnamon and nutmeg and all the ingredients will be listed down in the description of the video i've got here some olive oil about four cloves of garlic. And the reason why I'm using my food processor instead of my blender, you can certainly use your blender as well. I find that um, because I want it a bit chunky, I find I get better results with my food processor. I got some ginger, dark soy sauce, and you'll notice I'm not using any salt whatsoever. And that's simply because I know that ham is usually salty when it's prepared. And um, plus, that soy sauce there will be nice and salty as well. Some orange juice. And you can't do a good jerk without key ingredient here, scotch bonnet pepper. Over the uh, summer months, I garden. And I have, I'm sure you guys would have seen my videos of my garden. And I usually have a ton of peppers left back. That just came out of the freezer. That's what I'm trying to get to is that I usually freeze the excess peppers that I have. Be mindful that when handling scotch bonnet peppers, any sort of spicy peppers as I just did there with my bare hands, one, you may want to wear gloves, two, wash your hands immediately after with salt, with soap and water. And I've got here a nice big whack of scallions or green onions or spring onions. I'm not sure how you call it. Want all that in there. Oh, it's already smelling nice, man. And you would notice that the the spices that we went in there with, that cinnamon, the allspice, everything is very much Christmas in my books. Anyways, those are the flavors that I remember when I was growing up. I would smell in our home around Christmas time. And uh, we've got fresh thyme. All I want to do now is sort of blitz that until it's nice and uh, well come together and it's going to be a bit chunky if you want it smooth you can certainly do that another thing you can put in here if you really wanted to was some lime or lemon juice one more ingredient I forgot I was going to add in there some dark rum don't worry that's going to cook out if you're worried about the kids having alcohol and you know it's totally optional as well if alcohol is not your thing maybe it's religious re for religious reasons or just personal choice you don't have to And I'm just going to keep pulsing it until I achieve the sort of consistency that I'm looking for. Now this is going to be one of those times, very rare it happens, I tell you don't do what I am about to do. I am about to, to just pour the marinade on this, let it sit for about 10 minutes and then into an oven 350 degrees, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. What I would recommend doing, have it marinate overnight. That'd be perfect. So all we're gonna do now is pour that marinade all over it. 
and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna work but you know what let's just do it same speed as we say I'm just gonna work the bottom side of this then I'm gonna place the bottom side down like so just so it doesn't dry up too much because that is very exposed it will be very exposed in the oven and now you want to work that marinade I have some more there and this is why we made those tiny cuts as I mentioned earlier just for that marinade to go all over the place and yo what kind of nice this is gonna happen there perfect case scenario you would then cover this and allow it to marinate overnight in the fridge I'll be honest with you if you can get your hands on a spiral cut ham I would recommend that more than what the ham that I'm using right now and simply because because it will have those spiral cuts this marinade will really seep in and go deep into the almost the bone there's a center bone in this one here by the way um, and you'll get a ton more flavor all the way through the ham so my oven has come up now to temperature 350 degrees and all I'm gonna do is sort of loosely temp this and into the oven about 10 minutes a pound 9 pounds so we're looking at about an hour and a half or so as the um, the ham does its thing in the oven there it's now time to bring together the sort of glaze or dressing you can serve that you can glaze the ham with this and you can also serve it on the side of the ham orange juice about two cups of orange juice I've got some frozen mango I am based in Canada so I don't have the real thing all ingredients you use here today will be listed down in the description of the video additionally I will post this recipe on caribbeanpod.com I have some pineapple tidbits you want that juice and everything and this can is 14 fluid ounces I'm gonna go in with some grated ginger since we need this to become a sort of a glaze I'm gonna go in with brown sugar some fresh ground black pepper bit of salt and since we have that lovely allspice already doing this thing on the ham down there I thought I'd add some allspice in here if you also want to go in with some freshly grated nutmeg that will work also and two other things we've got to add in there the juice of a lemon and I'm gonna add some more of that rum and I'm only adding the rum now no usually I would add the rum later on but I want to assure people by doing it this way that rum will burn off and we will get the sort of undertones from that rum I'm gonna turn my heat up now to medium and bring that up to a boil but first I'm gonna add the juice of this lemon yeah, it is a big lemon eh? almost like an orange boy Wait, probably steroids it's now come up to a boil <clears throat> so I'm gonna reduce my heat I want this to go to rolling boil because we want to reduce this by at least I'd say 50% or even more we want this to cook all the way down to go nice and thick and sweet and all those flavors from yo just from everything so I have some patience it's been reducing now for about 45 minutes and the kitchen is smelling absolutely lovely all I'm gonna do here now is I have here the pestle from my mortar and pestle and I'm just gonna go ahead and crush some of the mango and the pineapple I don't want to crush it all I just want some I want to leave back some texture but I want to help that mango and pineapple break down and you may need if you don't have one of these you may need to use a potato masher or something we really want to get this to come together now I did end up switching over to my potato masher because I find that I'm getting a better sort of consistency or texture than using that um, that pestle so it's breaking down and it's becoming everything's incorporating nicely now I'm just gonna give this about another 10 minutes or so now I know that it's gonna thicken up a bit more 
once I turn the stove off. And this is pretty much a texture I want. I'm not gonna brush this onto the ham. I'm gonna sort of pour with a tablespoon or so use a, using a spoon and pour it onto there because I don't wanna knock the, um, the jerk marinade off the ham. I'm gonna turn off my stove here at this point. And the final thing I'm gonna go in with is the zest of an orange. You want that nice and fresh in there because I want that to be the final note that you get with the mango and the pineapple. Remember we started off with orange juice, so why not finish off with that zest? And all you need is about a teaspoon or so of that zest. Try not to go too deep. Try not to use an orange that, if you're living in North America especially, or maybe in Europe, you may get oranges with wax on there. Nah, you don't want that. Give that a mix, stir it all together, let the residual heat bring out the oils from that orange zest. It's been in the oven now for about an hour and 15 minutes. And what I've been doing from time to time, let's come over over this a little bit more there, is I've been basting it just to make sure we get that marinade going on everywhere. At this point, so it's been an hour and 15 minutes, I is that what I just said there? But it's been an hour and 15 minutes. I'm gonna crank up my heat now to 400 degrees Fahrenheit because I want this to start caramelizing on the outside to give it a nice color and that enhanced jerk flavor. I'll just quickly recap things. So we, we made the marinade, we, we trimmed the, the ham, we poured the marinade on there. I asked you guys to marinate it overnight into a 350 degree oven for an hour and 15 minutes. Then I cranked up the heat to 400, but one of the things I forgot to mention is, at that point I removed the tin foil, the foil that was covering it. So after an hour and 15 minutes, I removed the foil it's been in the oven a further 15 minutes now, so at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna turn my heat up now to the broil setting, which is about 500 degrees Fahrenheit. This, as I said, it needed, well, 10 minutes a pound, so I needed an hour and a half, so that is what I did. Here is where now I'm gonna go on, and I'm just gonna pour on that sort of chunky glaze that we made. I'm just gonna keep pouring that on and that's and the reason why I cranked up the heat in the oven now is because I want this to caramelize and this is gonna help with the sort of spicy nature of the the jerk marinade that we started off with just to help balance off things it's gonna go into the oven now and um, caramelize now because we are on a high heat now I really need for you all to pay attention to this don't leave it every three or four minutes take it out give it another basting like this and then we'll be you know golden I'm just done applying the third sort of glaze on there it's gonna go back into the oven now remember you gotta be checking it every three to five minutes or something until you get a nice color one more time in the oven and then we're all done. Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me. I just turned off the oven. I just brought it. I'm going to tent it and allow it to come, come down in temperature a bit before I slice it. I want it to sort of firm back up and redistribute the juices inside. You're looking for an internal temperature of about 160 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit inside. Remember I said... 10 minutes per pound but this is a fully it was already fully cooked when i bought it jerk ham christmas time you can't go wrong and remember we did that sort of dressing slash relish the leftovers you can use as a side to to serving the ham and we've got the mango the pineapple the orange juice the orange zest ginger you know it's all kind of niceness in there happy holidays everyone